Hello there, I am Bendegu Shuli and I will be showing you a couple of tips and tricks in Aptar's reinforcement add-on. New features of Column Reinforcement 5.0 In the previous version we could place the reinforcement only in columns with a rectangular section profile. From now on there is an option to do the same in columns with a circular section profile too. But this is not the only new feature in Column Reinforcement. I prepared three columns. One is with the rectangular profile and two are with circular. Let's start with the rectangular. I select it and place the reinforcement in it. The global settings are set for this column and I left everything in default. Click on OK. The reinforcement is placed in the element. I select the reinforcement and open the settings window. On the first tab, as usual, I can select the views of it and its concrete cover. On the next tab, the stirrup settings appear, where I can see that only one group is defined. This group has the ID number 1 and the yellow warning sign appeared. It is here because there is a collision of IDs in this element. I move to the rebar settings tab and we can see that one of the two groups of rebars has the same ID as the stirrup. I change it to number 3 and the warning sign disappears. I click on OK. Then check the selected reinforcement element in 3D. The element contains four rebars in two groups and stirrups. I select the element and open the settings window again. On the geometry page, I can change the shape of the rebars of group number 2 to the once bent end on the top of the column. The bending size is too big. I set a smaller one and click on the OK button. As we can see, there is one bend, but it is in the wrong direction. On the bent part, there is a new hotspot. And with this hotspot, I can turn the bending to the necessary direction easily. Of course, the other rebar, which is in pair with the first one, will be symmetrically turned too. With the hotspot on the end of the bend, I can make this part smaller or larger manually. All changes on this rebar will be repeated symmetrically on the second rebar. Let's change the other rebar group. I open the settings window. On the geometry page, I select the second group and all parameters of this group are visible. I change the shape of rebar end from straight end to bent up straight end. Size of the bend is too big, I set smaller values for it. Clicking on OK, the bend appears immediately. With the hotspot in the center of the rebar section, I can make it longer. The hotspot in the corner of the bend lets us move the bending stage up or down. But I see again, the direction of the bend is wrong. With the hotspot on the perimeter of the rebar section, I can turn the rebar to the correct direction. The second rebar in this group will be turned too, but of course symmetrically. With this method we get a much better solution for creating column reinforcement continuity. Of course, the simple bent rebar can also be stretched longer with the hotspot defined in the corner of the bend. Ok, let's see the settings of stirrups. I leave the reinforcement element selected and open the settings window. On the stirrup settings tab we see that only one group is defined with ID number 1. If I define two more groups, the yellow warning triangle appears on the right side of the window. It means there is an ID collision in the reinforcement. One or more elements have the same ID. We can see immediately in this window that all defined stirrup groups have the same ID now. I have to change them, so for the two lower groups I set number 4 and number 5. The ID collision has been fixed. The warning triangle disappears. Now I move to the placement tab and in the drop down menu of groups 
new IDs are visible. Now I set the stirrup distance for the first group to 100 mm. This modification is immediately visible in the preview window. I modify the distance in the two other groups too. Returning to the stirrup settings window, I change the stirrup group's length. And I click on OK. In the 3D model view, all changes are performed. Let's see now the circular section column. I select these two columns and place the reinforcement into them. The settings window opens and without any changes I click on the OK button and finish the operation. Reinforcement is placed in both elements and as we can see with the circular stirrups. I select the place reinforcement complex element one by one and set different IDs for them for easier identification. Let's check them in 3D. These two are the same elements with circular stirrups and with two rebars. Go back to the floor plan, select only the second one and open the 3D view. It seems there is only one rebar group with two rebars. I go back to the floor plan, select the reinforcement and open the settings window. On the first step as usual, we find the view option of the complex element and the concrete cover value option. Next is a stirrup settings page. On this page, we can see that there is one stirrup group defined with ID number one and the collision warning appeared again. On the next tab, the stirrup geometry can be set. And for this column, a circular stirrup is selected from two predefined types. On the rebar settings tab, I find that the ID of the two rebar groups is also number one. I change it to number three and the warning sign disappears again. I click on OK and close the window. Now we see the 2D representation of the reinforcements on the floor plan. If I grab one of the rebars with a hotspot, I'm able to rotate it around the center of the column. It seems like I rotated both rebars to the other position, but when I click on that other position, it is visible that there were two groups of rebars covering each other, so one rebar group stayed on the original position. You can check it easily in 3D, where we can see it pretty well. I select reinforcement in this view and open the settings window. I go to the rebar geometry tab. On this page, first I select the number two group of rebars. I change the shape of the rebars in this group from straight end to once bent end and put the smaller size for the bend. I click on OK. Two rebars, which are in the same group, have been changed. The bending of rebars will always turn to the center of the circular section of the column. With the hotspots I can stretch the rebar longer or with the other hotspot change the length of the bent part. As with rectangular columns or beams, all rebars in this group will be changed symmetrically. I select once again the reinforcement complex element and I change the length of the other rebar group. On the end of the rebar I see two hotspots. With a hotspot in the center of the section I can stretch the rebar and with the hotspot on the perimeter I can rotate the rebar around the center point of the column. I open the settings window. Now I will change the geometry of the other group. So I select group number 3 from the drop down menu. I change the shape of the rebars to the bent up straight end and set a smaller size for it. The direction is wrong, but with the hotspot on the bent stage I'm able to turn into the right direction. Now let's see the other circular column with ID number 3. I select the rebar and open the 3D window. I 
Like in the case of the previous column, only two rebars are visible. But in the settings window, we see two groups. I grab the rebar hotspot and turn it to 90 degrees. And this group of rebars is turned to this position. Now we really see two groups of rebars. In the 3D window, I select the element and with the center hotspot of rebars, I make them longer. On this model, we can see that the stirrup is circular. I open the settings window and select the stirrups settings tab. The yellow warning sign is visible, so there is a collision of IDs. On the rebar settings tab, I changed the ID of the second group to number three. Warning sign disappeared. I move back to the stirrup geometry settings tab. And here from the drop down list, I select the new spiral stirrup type and click on OK. In the model view, the spiral stirrup is visible immediately. As with the circular stirrup, it is possible to define some groups. I open the settings window and move to the stirrup settings tab. I define three groups. The yellow warning sign appeared again because new groups have the same ID as the first. I set other IDs for these groups. When it's done, I move to the stirrups placement tab and set a different distance for each group. When I change the value, it is immediately visible in the preview window. I finish it and click on OK. All three different groups are visible clearly and the spiral rise height corresponds to the set value. I go back to the floor plan. The last step is the cutting list. I select the reinforcement of the rectangular column and click on the cutting list tool. Then I place the list on the floor plan. Now I select the reinforcement of the circular column number two and click on the cutting list tool again. Then place the list next to the element. We can see that all elements of the column's reinforcement are listed separately. I modify the list separator border a bit because there is not enough room for the rebars view. And lastly, I select the reinforcements of column number three and click on the cutting list tool again, then place the list next to the element. Here the spiral stirrup is listed as one piece in each group and the full length is indicated. I now delete these two groups and I select the reinforcement of the first and second columns, then the earlier placed list. Click on the cutting list tool icon. The existing list is updated and all elements of the two columns are listed together. I now select only the list and click on the second icon of the cutting list tool. The program shows me which elements were listed in this list and selects them. I add the third column's reinforcement to the selection and the list and click again on the first icon of the cutting list tool. The cutting list is updated with all parts of the three columns. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at one of the email addresses in the description. You can also visit our website and find out more about our solutions. Link also in the description. Have a good day.